Hi everyone. I've been working on a little project that turns a bunch of Raspberry Pis into a working Hadoop cluster. In this video, I'm going to run through what you need to make it, show you how to install stuff, how to set it up, and hopefully you'll be able to play along at home and make your own cluster. Before I get started, I just wanted to give a shout out to a bunch of people that inspired me to do this, mainly Jamie Whitehorn and Jonas Richardson for their blog posts on creating Raspberry Pi clusters on Hadoop. Uh, there's a bunch of other people which I've put links to in the accompanying blog post and GitHub page for this. So you may be wondering why anyone would want to do this. After all, getting Hadoop to work on a one gigabyte quad core machine, even though there's five of them, is probably a challenge, and indeed it was. I wanted to do this as a learning exercise, really. I spend my day working with the Cloud Era distribution of Hadoop, which is lovely, but it does kind of shield you from some of the nitty gritty going on under the hood, and I wanted to learn a bit more about it. I want to see how to put together a cluster, because working with physicals is uh, obviously different to working with VMs or containers. And I wanted it feature rich, so I based it around Hue, so that all the components, well, almost all the components, in Hue were available for you to use. Now, I put together the code, it's on my GitHub page. I'm gonna run through in this video how to use it to configure the cluster so it does not only the do configuration, but it also does all your networking and stuff like that. Before we start, let's just have a quick reality check about this. There are a few things that aren't set up on this cluster and a few things it's not intended for. Firstly, there's no Impala setup. If you would like to get Impala working on it, um, send pull requests by all means, but I don't think the hardware is really up to running the Impala daemon across those clusters along with everything else it's running. It's not a secure distribution. There is no Sentry installed. It's meant for single user. It's meant for single job at a time, to be honest, as it's got a teeny amount of memory. And as a result, it's slow. It's slow to set up. It's slow to run stuff. That's just the way it is. It's Raspberry Pi's, it's a 35 pound computer. It's not a supercomputer. In order to set this up, you're gonna need to have some basic command line skills in Linux. So if you've not got those, you may wanna go away and learn those or use this as an opportunity to learn them. But the objective of this is to create a test environment and learn about Hadoop, not necessarily about Linux. So you will need to be able to um, stop start processors, um, analyze memory usage, look at log files, um, and basic networking knowledge is, is really useful for this. As of now, it compiles and it works. Things move on the internet. Um, repositories come and go when we're compiling binaries, um, when we're deploying this stuff to the actual cluster, certainly as we're relying on external dependencies for um, not only Apache components, but also system components, they can change and move. For example, the MySQL JDBC driver uh, is no longer available over HTTP, only HTTPS, that was a very recent change, and that caused things not to install. So little things like that will happen, and that's why you need the um, little bit of um, command line foo and Linux administration skills to be able to work out simple things like that. So if you have problems, then hit me up on the comments or on GitHub or on the blog um, and I'll do what I can. So let's have a look at setting this thing up. Okay, so what hardware are we gonna need to make this project happen? Well, obviously you're gonna need five Raspberry Pi Model 3s. I also purchased a cheap acrylic case to provide a base plate and a lid to keep the dust out and a pack of nylon spacers to actually make the stack of pies. In terms of memory cards, not all memory cards are treated equally or created equally. Certainly when benchmarking them, there's a link to uh, benchmarking tool here. And the ones that people said were performing the best and what proved were during the benchmarking is the Samsung Evo Plus 64 gigabyte card. That's the red and white one there. Um, that was giving me really good random writes on small files, so I went for those. In terms of powering this thing, I went for an Anker 60 watt um, USB power supply that's got six ports on it. Uh, if you do the maths at 60 watts, that's 10 watts of port, at five volts, that's two amps. In practice, it delivers slightly more than two amps, which is great for the pies because that's what they need, particularly with the Wi-Fi. Um, reviews on that particular unit 
seem to say it's pretty reliable and Anchor have a great support policy if anything were to go bad with it. We also need a whole bunch of USB cables. I went for the ones bundled with the uh, supply, so these are like 30 centimeter ones. I'll just keep it all neat and tidy because we are using Wi-Fi for this. We're not using uh, Ethernet cables. We will need Ethernet for one part of this. Um, you will need Ethernet into your um, network unless you want to do it manually yourself, so the Wi-Fi yourself. Um, that's really just to get things configured. You don't need it while it's running. That's just during setup. When it's running, I use a TP-Link travel router. Uh, this is bridged onto my main network so that um, I can basically take the cluster out of the house and take it to places, demo it uh, without having to reconfigure all the networking. And again, this can be powered off the USB hub. You'll also need, not surprisingly, some form of machine to do this. Um, I use a Linux machine because you're going to need uh, a web server during the configuration to act as a repo for all your um, binary packages that we were compiling. Um, I use the Python web server that's kind of comes out of the box on the next machine to do that. Many of the components in the DBGO system are written in Java and can be distributed in a binary format which we can use directly on the cluster. That means we don't have to compile them. However, there are some, some native features which we do need to compile. So we're going to need to build binaries for Hadoop, for Hue and for Uzi. So the way we do this is we take a memory card and we install a copy of Jesse Light. I'm using extensively throughout this project the version dated the 23rd of the 9th 2016. I know there are newer versions available but that's the one I've been using throughout this project and it comes with a few little extra perks. Namely it will when booted resize the uh, disk partition for us but also it has the SSH server enabled by default which I think is an error but it actually helps us out because we can do things headless. Uh, without having to wire the pies up to uh, monitors and keyboards. We can do it all over the Ethernet cable. Now, compiling a dupe is documented pretty well uh, across the web for the Raspberry Pi. Um, I made reference to some links earlier. We do need to compile ProtonBuff, though, to be able to do this, and that proved a little tricky. So let's set a Pi up as a development environment. So download the version of Raspbian from the 23rd of September. Write that to your SD card. In fact, all five SD cards, once you're at it, using the tool of your choice. Power up the Pi using one of the memory cards. I've got a spare one here, which I'm going to use just for the environment. Once that's booted up, we need to locate its IP address and SSH into it over the uh, wired connection. So use a network scanner to, to, to locate the IP address if you don't know what it is or attach an HDMI cable and a monitor to find it. Uh, SSH into the Pi, sudo up and then we'll update the operating system. Then we need to install the, um, some of the build tools, so autoconf download protobuf, unzip that. Make a minor change to the configuration for protobuf because Google moved um, the test suite to GitHub from Google Code, so we just need to edit these lines here and change those. Save that out, and we'll run some of the configuration scripts, so autogen first, and then the configure script. That will set up uh, us ready to actually build the binary files, so we make those. This, of course, is all speeded up, and this will take you the best part of an hour to do. Once that's compiled, what we're going to do is install it, and then we're ready to actually start compiling a dupe. So we wait for that to finish, it's passed all the tests, and as I say, we install it, and now we're ready to download and install Hadoop. So install the Oracle JDK, download the Hadoop source, we're using 264 for this, unpack it. There we go, and all nicely sped up. Go into the source files. We need to edit the build script, the Maven POM file, and just disable the documentation generation because there's a problem with compiling that. So x.lint will just change that parameter to, to, to none. Then we need to quickly download a small patch file which will apply. This is to make it compatible with the Raspberry Pi. 
and then it's still a whole bunch of packages which we nearly need for the build tools. Once we've done that, we use the Maven command to build the packages, skipping the tests. Again, this is sped up, this is going to take ages, well over an hour to do. So there we go, eventually it's built. Uh, we're just going to package that up now. So I'm just going to move it to the folder where we're going to create the tar file. We can see that the file there, so that's the binary file. So we're going to transfer that over to our main PC ready for when we want to um, serve that up for installation. For you, we download a bunch of packages so that it's got what it needs library wise to build it. We'll download the Hue source, this is 3.11. Unpack that and we need to make just a couple of changes to Hue to make it work on the Pi um, due to some of the memory limitations. So we download a patch here, we're applying this. This makes the uh, example loading work, um, there was a bug in 3.11. So this will be 3.12 by standard, so on 3.11 we need to download the patch. We're just going to edit the Spark submission script to change the default memory values from 1 gigabyte to 256 megabytes for the executor and driver menu uh, memory, sorry, because they're, um, they're, they're too high for the Pi and they're not overridable in an easy way. Then we're going to build the actual Hue binaries. Again, this will take quite a while, best part of three quarters of an hour, I believe. And this is sped up. And again, once this is compiled, we need to package it up, so we build the tar file. And there we are, there's our huge binary files alongside the Hadoop one. So now we need to compile Uzi. So if we haven't installed the Oracle JDK, we need that again. We'll download the 4.3.0 release of Uzi. Unpack that. We need to change the configuration build so that it targets the 1.8 Java version. So we change that in the POM file. Save that out set some options so that it doesn't uh, run out of memory whilst compiling and run the maven script to compile the binary for us again this is sped up this is also a long compile and now we've done that we need to install um, another library into the binary package, so we choose the right folder and download the ext 2.2, which enables the web front end for Uzi. And then we package it up to build the tar file that we need. So now we've got our three binary files, we need to move these over to the PC. Power down the Pi take out the memory card and what we're going to do is configure each node in turn so touch the Wi-Fi router it still needs to be connected to the wired while we set this up we boot up our first blank memory card SSH into your freshly booted Pi uh, update the operating system and then we're going to install Git and we're going to install Chef so Git is the version control system which will uh, allow us to get files off GitHub and Chef is an infrastructure as code tool which allow us to uh, run some scripts, configuration files I've written, uh, that configure the Pi. So we'll duplicate the Hadoop repo, set our SSID uh, password for the Wi-Fi, and then we run the chef command targeting the worker01json file. This took about 15 minutes to do, uh, and you can see there it's downloaded the binary file from the web server I'm running in another window on this machine. So they're the ones we compiled earlier. So power off the Pi. 
move the memory card out of the way. Power on with the next memory card and we set up worker O2. So again, it's the same process. We SSH into the Pi, update it using app get update. And install chef, install git. Set up the Wi-Fi and run Chef using the worker02.json file. Power it off and repeat the process for worker3. So we SSH in, elevate our privileges, update the operating system, download Chef and Git, install them, duplicate the repo, set our SSID and password as environment variables, and then run Chef targeting the worker03 file. And that will install. So, we power off the Pi, and at this point we've configured all the workers, so let's remove that memory card when the uh, lights have gone out. And set up Master O2. So Master O2 is going to run several of the dupe services. Uh, the main control is going to be done from Master O1, but we... Uh, Fortunately, you can't squeeze everything onto one pie, so we need two master boxes that do different things. So again, log in, update, install git, install chef. And this time we do need to run chef targeting the master02 configuration file. This will take slightly longer than the workers to install because there's a lot more software and then we power that off. And although we take the memory card out this time, what we're actually going to do is put all the memory cards back into the other pies. Worker 1 at the bottom, worker 2 and the next one, worker 3 and the third one up, and then master 02 in the next to top, and the blank memory card in the top slot, because we still have to configure master 01. Now when we configure master 01, what we're actually going to do is start a dupe, so we need all the other nodes in the cluster available, so we connect them for power and power on the cluster. Again, we still need the wired connection at the moment to, to allow us to connect into Master01 while we configure it, but we won't need that after we've done this. So again, same procedure, SSH in, elevate your privileges, update the operating system, install Chef, install Git, uh, and then we're going to do two Chef runs. The first chef run is using the master01.json file. That's going to install the services that are required to run Hadoop on the master node. And then we're going to do a second chef run, which is going to configure all the um, libraries and files that are needed from master02 in the HDFS file system that Hadoop runs. And once we've installed both of those, we then power it off and uh, we're ready to start using the cluster. So we can disconnect the network lead. We don't need that anymore because everything's over Wi-Fi. Before we use the cluster, we need to load in the example files that come with you. We also need to know how to stop and start the cluster. I've opened two windows here and I'm going to download some test data to load into MySQL. Just going to do this as root, as I say, it's not a, not a secure setup. We'll SSH into each of the workers and just download um, a test file for our, our examples. On each of the master nodes, you're going to find a bunch of scripts installed in the scripts folder. These can be used to start and stop the cluster. So on master01, we run the master01 start command, and then on master02, we run the master02 start command. 
and that's going to start up all your dupe services. We point our browser at Mastro 1, port 8888. We can connect it to you. There's a one time thing we need to do is just to install the examples. So if we go to the examples tab on the quick start page and install the examples one by one. I've sped this up because it's quite a lengthy process, but we only have to do it the once. So once those are installed, we'll have some data in our cluster and we can use the Hue interface to take a look at it. So let's take a look at the Hive Metastore. So these are the tables that are installed by those examples. And if we look in that, we can see lots of lovely data. The same in HBase. We can see lots of data there. And if we just quickly look at the dashboards made with solar, we can see that they're all working as well. So that's good. Now let's look at how we stop it. We run the stop script on master 01 and 02. When they finish shutting down the Adobe services, we can power off each of the nodes. So that's the same on master 01, master 02, worker 1, worker 2, and worker 3. Let's take a look at the hive and pig examples that are installed. So we start our cluster up using the startup scripts, connect to Hue, and we can start looking at some of the examples that are installed. So if we look at the hive examples, there's a bunch of them there. We'll just select one and run that. That's going to start up a job and we can take a look at that. All the old interfaces are familiar interfaces if you know Adupa there, so the yarn interface is there. But if we're just using the job browser in U, we can see the job running in there. And we can see it's succeeded and if we look back at the tab with the query in, we can see the data and manipulate it there. We don't have any databases set up, but we would see them there if we set them up. We're going to load in the pig example now. We need to just change uh, the script slightly because we don't have the classes installed. And we're going to specify an output folder when we run it. And we're going to submit this job. Again, through the job browser, we can see that change from accepted to running and eventually to succeeded. The pig jobs are using Uzi to submit them, so there's actually two jobs spin up. We need to be patient and wait for those to finish. Again, this is sped up, it's much slower in reality, but we can see the output from the job there. And if we go and look at the HDFS file browser and go to the path we specified, we can see the output data there. One of the great features of Hue is its notebook function. Let's take a look at the example notebook we installed. To use each of the queries live in our browser, we need to create a new session for each of the language types. So let's create the PySpark one. That actually creates a Spark job that runs behind the scenes. If we go and look at the job browser, we can see that being created. Once that's running, we're then able to launch the code from our notebook. As you can see here, we're running a very simple Python example, but we can edit this live in the browser and run it. And there are a number of other Python examples we can run. And it'll display the data in a variety of formats. So as well as simply reporting the output back, it can actually render graphs and charts. There are a whole bunch of different languages it supports and features. So that's, as you can see there, that job that ran the PySpark stuff has finished. So let's start the Scala session now. You're going to struggle to get more than one session running at once on the Py, so I would do them sequentially if I were you rather than in parallel. As you can see, that's started now, so we can run Scala code directly from our browser. Now this example also includes Impala. Now we don't have Impala, Impala installed on our cluster, so we're going to skip ahead and look at R. Now you remember we installed a file into Tump on the workers. That's, this example is going to use that. So we, as, once we've created the session for it, 
We just need to edit the path so that it points to the local file system. Obviously, if you restart the Pi, you're going to lose that file in the temp folder, so you're going to have to restart it. Again, there's a job created under the hood inside Spark to run the R session. And if we run that, we get a lot of the features of R available. So, for example, here we can see that we're actually rendering a nice graph. Now that's run, let's end the session. And if we look in the job browser, we'll see that job which was running our, our Spark session has now completed. One of the ways to get data into your cluster is to use the Scoop tool. This is also supported through the Hue browser. To use it, we're going to have to create a couple of connections. So I'll create a connection to MySQL to reference the sample data we installed earlier. So we point this at our MySQL database. And of course, we need a target link. So we navigate through the interface to add another link. We'll create an HDFS connector. Now the interface is a little bit odd so we do need to create it and then go in and edit it again. We put in the path to our HDFS file system and then we can create a job. See those links are created there. So we create a new job which we will call it import employees. We'll specify the from link as the MySQL and the to link as HDFS. Inside the from link, we just need to specify which tables we want to import. So we're going to import the employees table from the, from the data. And then we need to specify our output file type and where it's going to be located on HDFS. So we're just going to put it into a folder inside TMP. Let's save that and set it running. If we head off to the job browser, we can see our job is created. And that's going to run. So we wait for that to finish. And we can go and check the data inside the file system to see if it's imported it. Now that's finished, let's go and use the file browser. So we head off to slash TMP and there's our scoop output folder and we can see a bunch of data files that have been created. If we look at one of those, we can see the employee data that was inside the MySQL database has been brought in. Let's take a look at the Uzi examples. Now there are a lot of them and some of them I can't run because I don't have the supporting um, data sources to test this stuff. Um, so I'll run through a few. We're going to use the uh, shell job here. So uh, we're just going to submit that through Uzi and we can get a nice graph interface of it running here which shows the various components of the job. And if we look at the log file we can see the output of what the, the job did. If we look at the log for the actual step we can see hello world which is the python program running that we shelled to let's look at a workflow we'll do the complicated one let's look at spark for this to run the pi we need to edit the job so we're going to edit mode and edit the properties of the spark component we need to specify our memory settings in here so that it doesn't um, crash when we run it we'll submit the job and specify an output folder and again we can see this running that succeeded, so let's head off to the file system. And we can see in the Spark output folder some data files which have been generated by that job. Another great feature within Hue are the dashboards that can be set up using the solar indexes. So let's take a look at those. If we look at the dashboards, we can see there are three available. These are installed by the examples. Uh, and these use these indexes that uh, have been set up as part of the solar server. Let's take a look at a couple of the examples. Let's take a look at the Twitter one. As you can see, there's lots of filtering options here. And we can see some sample data there, some graphs. If we look at the Yelp example, we can see, again, not just uh, 
data but we can see maps and graphs and the web blog is similar in the sense that it features maps and graphs and charts There we are, a working Raspberry Pi cluster running Q and many Hadoop components. I hope you found it really useful. I hope you've learned a lot doing that. I know I did putting it together. If you have any questions or suggestions or improvements or enhancements, comment to your friends. Also, pull requests very welcomely received over on GitHub. Uh, if you can uh, keep things up to date or make things better or perform better, I'd love to hear from you. So have fun with it and see you soon.